So I want to talk about input here today because input is an important part of any kind of game. Up to this point, you really have been doing input by typing in stuff, right? Which is dumb. Like, who plays games by typing in stuff all the time? Imagine if you had to type in, move forward every time, or like, where direction do you want to move? And that's just how like MUDs work, but that's not how most games nowadays work. What about you typing want on the dead? what's the typing on dead? Yeah, that's actually you're typing in the keyboard, but it's dynamic, right? Um, all the stuff we've been doing this part have been like, oh, like what Pokemon do you want to know about? List the move that you want. Well, let's get to the real like meat and potatoes of game development and talk about how to actually have real time keyboard and mouse handling in your game. That is, you move the keyboard, or I'm sorry, you move the mouse. It's funny if you move the keyboard and it moves the, the game. You have to do this. Um, you move the mouse and it moves something on screen, or you press directions on the keyboard, usually WASD and the game responds to you in turn, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about a couple things. I wanna talk about two different ways you can handle input in your game. I'm gonna talk about them abstractly first. One, um, you can, in your game, while your game is looping, we're drawing stuff, right? We're clearing stuff to the screen. Every frame, we are doing something. We're doing some amount of work. The two ways you can handle input is, one, every frame, you can ask the, you can ask the operating system, hey, is this key currently being held down right now? Is this mouse button currently being held down right now? Or where is the mouse right now? You can ask for those things. That's like something you do every loop. You can say like, hey, where's the mouse right now? Or hey, is he pressing W right now? Is he pressing up right now? That's one way you can handle it. That's what's called polling. When you do polling, uh, polling is a term that's used to say, hey, every frame you're asking for the status of something. You are going out and you're asking for something, right? That is one way you can handle input, and you need that kind of method handling if you want to handle continuous input. Like say, hey, as long as he's holding down W, move forward, right? So every frame you would ask for, hey, are you pressing W, and move forward. The other way that you handle input is through events. Events is kind of the opposite of polling in a way, where while polling is you are asking, hey, what's the status of this thing? Events are the operating system is telling you that something happened. Specifically, the operating system will tell you a lot of things with regards to your game. It'll tell you at the moment that the player clicked the mouse button, hey, the player clicked the mouse button, here, right now, he just clicked it. Or hey, he just pressed W, he literally pressed it. Or hey, he just released W, like he just let go of W. You guys ever play games where you play with bone error where you let go of a mouse button and you want something to happen? Well, you want Windows to tell you when he's let go because that'll be the fastest you possibly can know. Other things that Windows will tell you is, hey, he's trying to resize the window right now. Or, hey, he wants to close the program. Those are all events that get sent to you from Windows. There's some overlap between those events. For instance, you can actually implement using polling, the polling method, you can detect when they've let go of a mouse button. Because you can tell that, hey, he was pushing the mouse button all this time, and all of a sudden he's not pushing the mouse button anymore. That means that he's let go of it recently. However, polling is really um, the the way you detect like normal like asking for um, information every frame, while as events tell you when things occur. So there's kind of also like it's kind of a weird thing because here you see literally the word poll event. Um, it's kind of a little bit confusing. All this really means is you're asking for Windows. Hey, have any new events come in that I should care about? And then Windows will tell you, oh yeah, he did this thing. He actually clicked the mouse this way. So here's how it breaks down here. So if I just minimize this for now, if I just get rid of this, this is what SFML looks like, kind of like at its simplest form, right? It's just every frame while the window is open, you clear the window, you draw something, and you display it to the screen. There is nothing else that's happening. You could put input handling here to say, hey, are you pressing a key, then do something in the game. But there's this whole block here. There's another while looping here, so I want to talk about this in more detail right now. 
So this while loop basically is consuming events that Windows has is ready to tell you about. And this loop inside here is where you put in all of your event-based handles. This while loop, the inside this while loop, next to this other if statement, is where you put code to handle the moment that something has been pressed. So this while loop, the first thing it does is say, hey, while I can still pull the event, do the stuff inside this loop. What this means is that it's going to say, hey, Windows, as long as you still have events that I haven't consumed yet, I'm going to stay in this loop. Every time it pulls an event, it puts it into this variable here called event. After it's put into the variable, you can look at the type of the event to see what type of event it is. So the first if statement, the one that's come built in, is, hey, if the type of the event is the closed event, then close the window. This means that when I click the little X in the top right, Windows will send this event to my program. And then I will say, oh, that event type matches my if statement here, so I'm going to close it. Okay. So watch what happens. I'm actually going to get rid of this if statement. But if I run this program, I can close it correctly now. If I comment this out, or if I just delete it, like so, I think I showed you guys this before. I can no longer close my program because the event is getting fired, but nothing in my program is handling it. In fact, like so, I can handle it and I don't have to close. I can do something else. Every time I click on it, I can actually print something out to the screen. Top left here. Right? So I can't actually close it by clicking that thing because I'm not handling that event. So this if statement here handles one specific type of event. There are other types of events you can handle. You can say event.type. Let's say a mouse move event or a mouse button event. Windows will tell you that there is something called a mouse button event. <coughs> Let's do mouse button pressed here. That's one of the events. And I can just do a printf saying that, hey, you press the mouse button. And Windows will tell you when this happens. So if I, if I click something, I can be told when that occurs. When you're pressing a mouse button. Okay. The way this works is that when you, a mouse button, uh, when you click the mouse, it basically pushes, Windows will push one of these events onto a queue and say, okay, well, the next time you ask for it, it's, it's in there, you have at least one mouse button event. And once you have that mouse button event, you can actually get information about which mouse button you've pressed. So for instance, I can tell which mouse button has been pressed. I'm just going to print this out to the screen. Actually, I'm not going to write an if statement. I'm just going to print out using percent %d for integer event mouse button button. This thing says, hey, the event that you passed in, give me the mouse button out of it, and give me the specific button that they clicked. And now I can tell inside a number, can you guys tell like I'm clicking different ones? Right? Those events also have information about things like where, what you've clicked, okay? This is event-based input handling. If I want to know while I'm, I, if I, let's say I want to print something out as long as I'm holding down the mouse button, I wouldn't do it here though. If I want to print something out as long as I'm holding down the mouse button, there's, a, there's another way you can do that. This is the polling method. So in SFML, it gives you two of these, one for mouse and one for keyboard. 
And within there, it gives you a couple of functions that you can tell, hey, you can tell when a specific mouse button is hit. So this if statement right here is saying, hey, <coughs> for the mouse, sf colon mouse, is a mouse button pressed? And it's a function you call, this is a function you call, and to the function you pass in which mouse button you care about. You can do left, right, or middle. So you say, hey, I care about the mouse buttons on the left, or you can do right, or you can do middle. Okay? And you can write an if statement and say, if this mouse button is pressed, do something. And in this case, I'm going to say mouse button held, left mouse held. So what you're going to see is that this if statement, if I zoom out a little bit, is outside of this loop. Okay. Anything you want to do event handling on has to be inside this loop. It will not work if it's outside of the loop. But my if statement is outside of that loop, but in my main loop here. So now when I run my, when I run my program, see I can press right, middle. I'm literally clicking once. Look how many times it's actually telling me. There's four frames that I actually held the mouse, even though I was letting go pretty quickly. It actually had enough time for three or six frames for it to be detecting that that mouse button was held. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let you guys to do lab number one uh, in Zool. I put it up there. And there's a couple of links. So the first link is the Windows link. Uh, these are event handling. This is basically how you handle events, the all the different event types. So you can scroll down. These are all the different event types that SFML has. The, fir uh, the first one, for instance, like you resize the window. That's one. Lost or gain focus on your window. You put in text on the keyboard. You press the single key or release the key. You move the wheel, mouse wheel. You press the mouse. You move the mouse. You your mouse entered the window or left the window. You pressed a joystick button. These are uh, Xbox 360 or Xbox One controllers. It'll detect that. So you press any joystick controller. You moved an analog stick somewhere, or you connected or disconnected a joystick. Okay. So that's the first page on the lab link. The second page is the polling method of how you detect whether something is currently being pressed or not. So this is how you handle whether a key is pressed or not. This is how you handle whether a mouse button is pressed or not. And here are our joysticks, which we're not using right now. Okay? So go ahead and start lab number one, and then uh, we'll get into lab number two after that. Thank you.